Have you guys ever had these streaks of where you've just felt super productive? You're waking up early, getting your workouts in, killing your nine to five, and maybe even doing your side hustle afterward. You're feeling really good about yourself, but the second you finish your work one day, everything comes to a screeching Hold. The motivation that you used to have is no longer there, and it takes all of your energy just to do one simple little thing. You're experiencing burnout. In an age where productivity is probably one of the biggest buzzwords out there related to self-improvement, and all of these gurus have this metaphorical hard-on whenever we work 16 hours a day and slave away to hustling or making more money, it's really hard to not feel guilty about just being a potato and not doing anything. And that's something that I personally struggle with. I was basically that person that felt really productive one week, but then the next week I just had no desire to do anything whatsoever. I didn't want to do any work. I didn't want to work out. I just wanted to lay in bed. But the further I think about it, it isn't me that's the problem. It's society's view towards relaxation and mental health. And I think more people are starting to realize that hustle culture is actually toxic. Now, I'm not someone who claims to be a productivity guru, and honestly, nor do I want to be, but I do dedicate my channel focused on making small improvements in your life that can eventually compound in the long term. And that's why when you feel like you're burnt out and really don't want to do anything, I suggest just not doing anything. And here's why. While I was in my unproductive phase, I decided that instead of filming and editing my YouTube videos, I decided to just switch it up. And one of the things that I don't do often is read. And I know I should be reading more, but... <sighs> So I picked up a book that I bought a while ago, but I never ended up actually reading, and it is this book. It's called Everything Is... And funny enough, there's a little story in this book that I wanted to share with you guys. So in the book, Mark talks about two entities that basically drive our consciousness and our bodies. On one hand, we have the thinking brain, which is the brain that's, you know, logical, rational. And here, on the other hand, we have the emotional brain or the feeling brain. That's where you have all of the emotions, you know, happiness, sadness, anger, etc. Your feeling brain tends to have a lot more weight into the actions that you do. Now you can see this when you're trying to lose weight and you really want that double cheeseburger even though you know logically that's not a good move. Or it's why you still decide to text your abusive ex even though he or she was basically a terrible person. The point is we are always driven by our emotions and it's the same reason you go to your nine to five job. Yes, you understand that you need to work to make money, but is there an emotion behind wanting to do that? I argue that it could be fear. So with this information, how do we handle being unproductive? Now, even though your feeling brain has a lot more power in the decisions that you make, your thinking brain needs to sort of act as your parent or your brakes when you feel like something bad is going to happen. You basically have to negotiate with your emotions. So think of it this way. If you were a parent and you wanted your child to eat broccoli, how would you do it? Would you just shove it down your kid's throat and be like, eat your broccoli, kid? I mean, that's one way to do it, but your kid might end up actually hating you long term, so that might not be the best option. You could strike a deal with your kid saying, if you have broccoli, you can play video games tonight. Or if you have broccoli, you can have ice cream as well. And the same goes for when you're negotiating with your emotional brain. Come to an agreement that a parent and child, emotional and thinking brain, can actually come to. So that means if you don't want to do any work today, maybe you just let it go, barring that you don't have any urgent deadlines. But take the time to actually restore your mental health. Start small and take the tiniest bit of effort that you need to get to where you have to be. Maybe all that is, is putting on your shoes to go to the gym. You don't actually have to go to the gym, but you just put on your shoes. But by the time you put on your shoes, you're hoping that your emotional brain will eventually start to realize, hey, you know what? I actually do want to go to the gym. 
But if you still decide that today's not the day, then today's not the day. Now, I'm not giving you permission to cheat and push away all your obligations. I suggest giving yourself a hard deadline. Like, even if one week isn't enough, but you have something that you need to do, then you gotta do it. When it comes to working out, I need to work out three times a week. That is the hard minimum. And if I don't, I'll feel even worse than I did before. And I know that I don't want to feel worse than I already am, so I usually end up going. When you're experiencing some sort of burnout or lack of motivation, I just ask that you be kinder to yourselves and just not try to beat yourself up every time things aren't necessarily feeling one way or the other. I would personally much rather prioritize my health and well-being over meeting some sort of productivity goal. And now recently, since I haven't been doing much, I just try to not feel guilty about it and just take things day by day so I can eventually hit my long-term goals. And I'm not worried about taking one step back if this means that I can take five steps forward. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content similar to this. Take it easy.